ce era bine. Și mă spun să cu locris. Să nu mai se pot să fie cu o nouă mântuire. Știi? And the word became what? Flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Full of what? But grace, see. Because John 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning eh, was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. That's the word. That word dwelt among us. And the flesh came to us. We want also to ask, what does grace do in your life? Number one, we say, grace is a booster of faith. It will boost your faith. Grace, we say, it, we give an example here with the guitarist, your first guitarist and fifth guitarist. But grace is an amplifier. It takes that which is small in you but good, and then it amplifies it. Say amen. Mm. May God amplify your life. Everything about you. Everything good about you. Mm. So when God amplifies your life, he takes that tiny bit then he starts giving you the big thing. He says, wow, wow, the grace, the grace of God is an amplifier. Say amen. Okay, first Samuel 16, verse 13. What did he say? Then Saul, the brother Samuel, took the horn of oil and anointed him, David, in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel left the oil and spread it out. Was the first Christian man of God. David was a man of God too, but he was able to speak of the Lord. And grace is a word. Grace is a word. Let's not forget it, but grace is an amplifier. Wherever you are, it will find you. And when it finds you and it strives with you, you are never returned to God. Say amen. It's a great word. Like with the grace of God, there is one property that can lift you up. An elephant makes sure that everybody looks at you with an elephant down. Say amen. Talk to someone in Devon. Is someone in Devon? Yeah, point at them and say, Oh, Musa. Oh, Musa, Musa, we are pissed. Wow. And I'll be completely fed. Completely fed. Say amen. Now we see David being the king of Judah. Yet he started by being elevated in his own family. Now the king of Judah. Later the king of Israel. Later the sweet submission of Israel. What a man. What a king. And yet David yet many fold. David took someone to that. I'm not saying he takes someone to what? I'm simply saying David took someone and says, I feel better already. David took someone to what? Having done that, he arranged, yes, ma'am, he arranged that the husband be killed. Yeah. Uriah was killed by David. See, until the prophet came in in a, what we call a parable or a pictorial a prophetic way. Yeah. And he began to paint that way. And David was angry. Who is this man? know the familiar words of the prophet. You are the man. You are the man. And David took that stuff creatively and made it his own. Renew a right spirit within you. Do not take away your Holy Spirit from you. What a man. And God says, such a man is better than half of the people. And today, the benchmark of all things to us is the man David. Yes, he came to God. So it's how you came to God with your heart. An open heart and an open conscience. Say amen. That the many men and women of God came, he will take them. Mm -hmm. But they love God too much. So he said, let's take them. And then they came to him. Half a man. Grace is a word. Say amen. Psalm 92, verse 9 to 12. And David is recounting that. Yes. Let's read that together. Psalm 92, verses 9 and 10. Let's go. 1, 2, and 3. Your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies are 
you can only say that under the grace of God. They don't perish unless you have the grace of God. Only workers of iniquity shall be what? Cut. Watch that. Cut out. But my own you have exalted like the wild ox. A unicorn. I've been anointed. Say I've been anointed. Oh, come on. Say, say I've been anointed. One more time with these Roman Catholics here. Say I've been anointed with fresh oil. When God anoints you, you are never the same. Say, say that again. He takes you from the back of the church to a preacher. Mm -hmm. Some of you seated here, you are going to preach one day. There is no one who sits under my voice and never goes to church. Who will preach? Tell your neighbor, we are looking at our next preacher. Say, our greatest preacher in the name of Jesus. Number two, what did we say with number two? Grace qualifies the unqualified candidate and puts them on top. <laughs> Grace is a qualifier. At the university, they tell you your points don't qualify you. You want to do medicine? We must get three A's. One A is a five point, so we must have 15 points. Especially you, sir. <laughs> you must have 15 points. Or 14 points, maybe. Five, five, and four. Maybe you qualify. But three straight A's. Not in anything. Not in history and Kerele. No. <laughs> they do consider those irrelevant for medicine. <laughs> yeah, they want either you have your meds, either you have your biology, and you have your chemistry. Mm, or physics. Yeah. So when you have those, then it qualifies you to be there. One of our in in Lenjevele, in Chaye, in Chaye, six points. Bam, forget it, five, but we will six to the four. I'll just see a woman in Chevele, a woman will be cool. But I yes, Dr. Lepay say, I shall have the medicine. In a sense, it's young in Zitubula, I eat. Instead of who possess, who will possess oil, and I will possess, but in medicine, it doesn't make sense. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? But hey, with God, grace qualifies the unqualified. You say it, and nurse may say you don't qualify. But God says, hey, you qualify. I qualify. Say amen. I qualify. Yep, I qualify. I qualify to teach professors, as I stand here. Eh? I qualify to mentor professors. Eh? Professors. One of our pastors is a professor. I've mentored him for many years. Professor of Pindura University. He's a vice chancellor. So if you are advisor and look for a place, talk to me. Eh, there is just one phone call. Please. I have my son here. He needs to get into this place. Many here have gotten into this place. Just one phone call. Tomorrow, not tomorrow, tomorrow. So that means I am qualified to pastor this church. A uh, pastor minister for the government. Over the phone, I've mentored some of them. Not that I'm not qualified myself. I'm qualified in my own way, in the natural. But I'm talking of qualified in the spirit. Hey, anyway. God's grace is upon us. Say amen. We were far away from the commonwealth of Israel. But he stood down. And he said, give me your hand. I can't leave you down. When you collide with grace, it can't leave you down. Grace must of necessity lift you up to a higher place so that when you look and say, ah, how did I come here? <laughs> and someone will say, Nyasha. Say, Nyasha. Zimbori, Nyasha. Pamsorope, Nyasha. Oh, Give your neighbor help and say, Hey, them one now, hey, them one now, hey, them one now. Fever, fever, mwana, fever. Fever, fever, fever. When fever and grace locate your head, you are never the same again. Say amen. Even those people that were despising you, when they look at you and read you, they change their language. I just say, Get away. 
Makadiko baba. Maketa we. Makadiko baba. Eh, mauku. Njituriki mauku. Mauke, njituriki. Njitasi njituriki. Then you say, in the name of Jesus. I see you on top and never under. I see increase over your life. I see expansion. In the name of Jesus. Say amen. This is what we call grace. When grace finds you, it lifts you up. Grace never leaves you where you are. Say amen. In the name of Jesus. So it qualifies the unqualified. We talked of uh, Second Kings 7 verse 1 and 10. I have no time to read that. Four leprosy men. Four leprosy men. They asked this question. Why sit we here until we die? <laughs> there are certain questions that stay up grace. Yeah. There are certain qu questions that diminish grace. Hey, but why is God doing this to me? You have just diminished grace. But why sit we here until we die? These are the four men who are sickly, who are dying, starvation, limited in number, sitting by the gate at twilight. Hey, why sit we here until we die? Why are you in that position until you die? Why do you tolerate that thing there until you die? Yeah. Why do you tolerate that thing that you have tolerated? Look at this. This girlfriend of yours, you have not yet married her, but she is already terrorizing you. Why tolerate that? Why not write a WhatsApp and, and shuffle the shots? You have done. You have still done. Shots and chakude. It's not your prayer. No explanation. No, I will see the pastor. Because me as a pastor, I don't deal with girlfriend for even issues. To try and reconcile you. What for? Yala nan, full stop. But husbands and wife, I'm there. Girlfriend and boyfriend, what for? <laughs> who, who says? Just, just live and go. Go your separate. You are better off living now than living in marriage. Yeah. Yeah, because we are all involved in there. We are all troubled. Mm. So if that lady is terrorizing you or that man is terrorizing you now, leave the man. Yeah, leave. Don't cry over a man. There are other men. Good men than that cro crocodile that you have there. A better man. Better healthy man that will take you from here to there. <laughs> That guy is useless. Just leave him. Send him a WhatsApp after this meeting and say, I hate Bishop Preach. And therefore, I'm empowered to reject you. And reject. And wait, you'll find a better man than that. The problem with you, lady, you are crying always. You are crying for a useless guy. Yeah. Don't cry for a guy. Huh? No one wants to say that. Don't cry for a guy. The same guy you are crying for, he goes to the toilet too. Don't cry for a guy. Cry for God. <laughs> cry for a spouse, a husband. Yeah, they, I give it to you. But ah, it's not a guy. No, no. Who wants to tell you anointing at the standard? Please, do you pray for my boyfriend? Now he doesn't send me messages. I will never waste my anointing on that. Yeah. Just break the thing and leave and go forward. It just tells, tells you, hey, hey. And Chakudesha, see? And if you're a lady, put a lipstick there and kiss, and say to me, kiss. He says, This is the last one. You're free. Am I not simplifying life? There are so many of you complicate life over a boyfriend or a girlfriend. We as pastors refuse to deal with issues of boyfriend, girlfriend. You deal with it yourself. If you're giving each other problems now, just cut the relationship. You will see. You will go to heaven. I'm telling you. You'll be in heaven. <laughs> if you're not in heaven because you rejected a lady, then that's not the Bible I know. you go to heaven straight. Straight. God will say, well done for dropping that black mamba of yours. Well done. And then he gives you someone. Or stay like that until you go to heaven. Paul had a gift of celibacy. Mm. Paul was alone. Yeah. He says, only Mary, Paul uses this word, 
Only marry if you're burning. Do you want me to explain what burning is? Or you know what burning is? <laughs> it means if you've lost. Last burned. Mm -hmm. Last in young men burned. You're a young man. How old are you? 29. So you're not yet married. You are at your peak. You are very dangerous. <laughs> Don't pray an all night prayer, the two of you, with this man. Yeah, it won't last three hours before he pounces on you. You start saying, you know what, as we pray together, I feel like we should hug in the spirit. Uh, before you know it, he's covering you. Because he has often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains have been torn apart by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Nor could anyone stop you. Let's go to verse 5. And always, verse 5, night and day he was in the mountain, and in the pools crying and cursing himself with stones. When he saw, verse 6, when he saw Jesus afar off, this man. some extraordinary power. You can find a young lady with a demon. Four men can't hold her down. Yeah, because she is expert there. Yeah. So this man, no chains could bind him. You just break them. Let's read verse 6. But when he saw Jesus afar, he saw grace afar. <laughs> a man full of grace. Watch what grace does. He saw Jesus afar. He ran not to fight him. He ran to worship him. <laughs> Grace is greater than demonic influence and power. He ran to worship him and worshipped him. Verse 7. Verse 7. And cried with a loud voice. Notice Jesus hasn't said anything. It's the appearance of Christ. And said, what have I to do with thee? And he addresses him. Jesus, thou son of the most high God. And he says, I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. He understands that anointing is there to torment demonic forces. Watch then the next scripture. And cried with a loud verse 8. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. 
That's the first time Jesus is talking there after the an encounter with this legion. legion. And then verse 9. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is legion for my name find his lamp over. My name is Legion, for we are many. Verse 10. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. <laughs> yeah. This is the demon begging. Please, don't torment us. It's not our time. Demons know their time. Christians don't. <laughs> Demons know their time. They are saying it's not our time. Yeah. Don't send us to that place called hell. It's not our time. Please. So, demons find the widest range of expression when they occupy a human being. When they come into your life, they can cause you to lie, to cheat, to deceive. But when they're in a house, in a brick somewhere, a brick can't express. That's why they are always asking to be human beings. If Human beings can't accommodate them. They go to animals. Mm -hmm. Because animals can express. They can bite. If it's a lion, chew you up. Chew your ears. And so, they don't like to be in things that are stationary. So here they are asking, and Jesus sends them into the swines. Pigs. And they go in there. Let's pick it up, verse 15. Verse 15. 15 and then verse 20. Verse 15. And they came to Jesus and to see him that was possessed with the devil and he, and he had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. Grace gives you a right mind. <laughs> this man was considered mad. Many people that we think are mad are demon possessed. And now legion has come out of him. He is in his right mind. And they were afraid. Verse 20. Verse 20. Verse 20 says, And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis. Decapolis were the seven cities. Yeah. This man becomes an evangelist. From demon possession to an evangelist. Okay. Jesus, and he was telling what Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. I pray that when you encounter grace, people will marvel at your transformation and the transformation of your life. In the name of Jesus, say amen. That's what grace does, ladies and gentlemen. Grace, the master key to greatness. The early church was full of mighty deeds. Why was it so? Because this early church was full of grace. What we say, what we mean when we say early church, the first church in the book of Acts in the New Testament is referred to as the early church. How was it birthed? in the upper room in Jerusalem after 120 days. Is that, oh, sorry, after how many days? After, after how many days? 40 days plus, how many days? 40 plus 10. After 50 days, mm, they had been waiting. They had been waiting. There are 120 of them. Pray. Pray. And then suddenly the Holy Spirit fell. It is Peter who stood up under grace and spoke. And 3,000 men and women were established in that church. That's what we call the early church. And all other churches that were born or birthed out of that. Mm. Acts 4, 32 to 34 reads, Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart. Say one heart. One mind and one soul. Neither did any say that any of the things he possessed was his own. But they had all things in common. If you want to see a life that is full of the grace of God, see their giving patterns. See how they give. See how sensitive they are in giving. Uh -huh. Because when God converts you, he converts your wallet as well. Mm -hmm. He doesn't leave your wallet. Yeah. When the grace comes, it touches your heart, and the next thing that touches is your wallet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please look at your neighbor and say, why are you so stingy like that? Are you sure there is grace over your life? <laughs> Because when God has truly saved you, 
you find that you are so generous. You find that money is not an issue for you. You can give your bottom dollar, your last dollar, and give it away to someone. Because you are, happy, you are more happier to see someone being a recipient of what you have than, than you holding it. <laughs> so grace makes you a great giver. I have never seen truly, truly a man, a woman of God who is truly born again, who is stingy, except you. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, you are one of a kind. <laughs> Talk to them and say, you are one of a kind. <laughs> I have never seen such. And then verse, oh, but we go, verse 33. <laughs> And with great power, the apostles gave witnesses, witness rather, to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And what? That word great means mega grace. And mega grace was upon them all. Great grace. Say great grace. And verse 34. No was, should we pronounce that word as no or no? Nor was there any among them who left. <laughs> who left? And the, among them who left, for all who were possessors, watch what grace does, of lands or houses, sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold. That's what Christ does, honestly speaking. Yeah, honestly speaking. You, you be the judge of your life yourself. You're giving patterns. Mm. Are you able to give? Are you able to be touched by God, not only in praising and worshiping, but in actually finding it free? Some of you, your, your hand have a, a plaster of Paris like my, my, my granddaughter there. Yeah, lift, lift it up, mom. Lift it up. Can you see the plaster of Paris on, on, on Ariel there? That's the plaster of Paris on the other leg there. So your hand is like that. Mm. You can't you can give. Mm. It can't stretch. Mm. <laughs> I'm strong. <laughs> Say to your neighbor, hello, Miss or Mrs. Armstrong or Mr. Armstrong. Mm. These guys... Great grace appears to them. Guess what? They find it easy to sell lands and houses and properties. I've sold lands and houses for the kingdom of God. I have. So I'm not standing here to preach a gospel that I've not done. Just given the money. Sold houses. So a gospel that I've not done. So a gospel that I've not done. When I... When I... <laughs> until you reach certain levels of giving, God cannot trust you with money. You are a very dangerous person. Yeah. He can never trust you with money until you get to a point where you are liberal in your giving. Mm. Hang around me and see how I give people money. Everywhere. Not that I have money, but I find it easier to part with money more. So I can't understand when someone cannot give money. I just can't understand. For me, when I see a need, instantly it's my wallet that can sort out. Because the Bible says, money answereth all things. Yes. Don't be hugging people and say, oh, we are with you in the spirit. No, be with me with your money. Then I'll be here. Yeah, because money answereth many things. <laughs> I told my churches all over, don't give me clothes for birthday. I have too many of them. Don't give me oversized suits and so. Don't do that. Don't give me shirt. Don't buy me underpants that are so big that they are falling down. I have to no. Just give me money. I know what to do with money. I'll bring it to church and give it to church. Hey, don't buy me things. Don't buy me. Hey, don't buy. For me, honestly, don't buy me a shirt. Don't buy me a tie. Don't buy me perfumes. I have so many perfumes. Just give me money. I will show you how I do it. I will give it to this man here for the land and building. That's how, that's the use of money. You are freer if you're not a slave to money. Ah, person Did you know that the economy of God has enough money? Here's the problem. We are not passing it through. 
When it reaches you, you build a dam, carry a dam around it, and say, money, you are not leaving me here. And therefore, it doesn't flow. Money is called currency. Currency means something that flows. But once it reaches you, Kocha Nembe, that money doesn't leave. <laughs> Talk to your neighbor and say, you have my money. Please give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> give it to me. Someone, somewhere here's your money. They were touched by God long back. You know what their response is? We bind you certain. They don't know that it's God saying, pass the money. Hey, pass the money. Once you are open, instead of praying, Lord, give me money, say, who should I give money? If your prayer is like that in the morning, watch money coming to you. Pray with that prayer with me. Say it again. Who should I give You are not praying. Pray, pray. Every morning ask, who should I give? Either $10, $20, you, God will upgrade you. You end up giving $30, $50. You end up saying, what's your school fees? Can I pay for it? You graduate. Do you need $1,000? You are in the league. Until you come to the league of houses and lands. Yeah, houses and lands. If you are married, train your wife as well to say, what we have made is up here. Uh, yeah, in a certain season. So that your honey can say, honey, give. Because it's your honey who's the devil. The devil, <laughs> it's honey. <laughs> honey that says we have worked hard. Who says you have worked hard? It's a honey that stops the flow of the blessing. Yeah. I taught my honey, when it's time to give, we're giving. Yeah. I just come in, this is what I feel. I feel we should do this. What do you think? Yes, yes. We do it tomorrow. Boom, gone. <laughs> when I... Uh, <laughs> Show me, Lord, in a dream. Show me in a dream. What dream? What dream do you need? <laughs> no, was there anyone among them who lacked? If you want to go to this early church situation, look what they did. For all who were possessors of lands, houses, sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold. <laughs> <laughs> Can I see those that have houses? Lift up your head. Or oh, lands, houses or lands. Because that's what you consider asset, not a car. If you have a car, get away from me. It's nothing. Yeah, a car is a liability. It's just rubbish. <laughs> yeah, it's just a thing there that will change. You lose value in the next four years. You'll be surprised why you were muffling that thing. It's houses and lands. Mm. Lift up your hand, lift your house a bit. Yeah. If God says to you, give that, would you give it? Yeah? <laughs> there was silence in heaven. If God said, give your house and sell it, would you do it? Some women would divorce their husbands. No, you ate wrong. How can you sell what we've worked, worked hard for? Because you don't understand. You don't understand the things of God. You're still bound. Mm. You're bound. And therefore, you can't experience resources in your life. You can't attract money in your life because you are bound. Because once money comes to you, you never pass it on to the needy. There are many needy people in our church here. And yet, a few people can sort out the needs of people. Just a few. If you get 10 people, well, they can sort out the needs of people. And teach them. When you get this as well, tithe and then give. Tithe and get, then we are giving church. Can you imagine? Somebody comes new in our church, all of us are identifying. This person is new. You look at him, look at their shoes. Look at what they're wearing. Look at their way do. And then we compete. Let's go to them. Let's go and give them. Mm. I perceive you have a need. I have a prophetic word for you. Instead of saying, I saw you, I have a prophetic word. The word is, you need man, and I give you man. Hey, yeah. I tell you, you won't leave such a church. You won't leave such a church. But people come to church hungry. They leave church hungry. When I look up in my yard, I'm going to paint it up. I'm going to paint it up. I'm going to May God deliver this church and make it a Macedonian church that was commended by Apostle Paul that gave liberally. Say amen. They gave houses. 
May you pray that God will make you a giver of a house. When you pray like that, you have no house. That means God has to give you a house or houses. Uh, that's a prayer that you should make. Lord, make me give houses. And you have nothing right now. Houses are going to come to you. And when they come, young men, give that house. Yeah, give, and watch what God can do for you. Say amen. 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 May God touch you to <laughs> The rich young man felt very sorrowful when I said that. <laughs> The rich young ruler. Oh, no. This church, ladies and gentlemen, was full of great grace. Say amen. What was their secret? Grace was their secret. Say amen. And Acts 4, verse 33. And great grace was upon them all. All. There is something about giving that triggers grace. Something about giving. Not once in a while, but to make it your lifestyle. Make it your lifestyle. In the name of Jesus. Say amen. amen. Grace causes its recipients to rule and dominate in life. It gives them what we call competitive advantage over those who do not have it. <laughs> Yeah, when we are competing, I have an edge over you when I'm carrying grace. You understand? When you go to an interview, I have grace. You don't have grace. But you have your certificate that says A, A, A. Mine says E, D, E. Yeah. They interview and say, you know what? You, in terms of qualifications, you qualify. But there is something that's missing. And they tell it personality. You have no person. But this guy with E, E, E's. He has personality. We want to employ him. They leave you. You have no grace. Grace of God always puts you on top. Say amen. amen. Always puts you on top. It gives them that advantage over those who do not have it. Romans 5, 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive... Oh, so there is abundant grace, there is great grace. Much more those who do what? Receive abundant grace. And of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Say abundant grace. Say it again, say abundant grace. The word reign in scripture above comes from the Greek word basalu, which means to exercise kingly power. Kingly power. Say kingly power or the highest influence. Influencers in the kingdom of God possess mega grace or abundant grace. May abundant grace be your portion today in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and say, abundant grace, O oh Lord. Ah, that prayer is a weak one. Say it again. Abundant grace, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. So it is grace that make people great. It's not casting lager. There's an advert that says, casting lager makes you great. Rubbish. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It is the grace of God. <laughs> there used to be an advert when we were growing up, the Ambi advert, the Ambi people, the skin lightener. Ambi, Ambi. Ambi is the best. And then they will flash. Ambi people always look great. Until it was about Ambi. <laughs> Only grace changes your life. Say amen. Listen to the words of Apostle Paul. Hey, yeah. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. <laughs> hey. If people try to praise you, add this word. It's the grace of God. Amen. If people say you are so beautiful, say it is the grace of God. Mm. If people say you are so kind, say it is the grace of Amen. God. If people say you preach well, say it is the grace of God. Mm. If people say you are handsome, say it is the grace of God. Yeah, because in one thing, God can alter that. So you always attribute everything to the grace of God. Yeah, it is the grace of God. Tell your neighbor, I thank God for the grace. Mm. 
And this great apostle says, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than all. Yet not I, but what? Nyasha. <laughs> apostle Paul labored. That's why though he was not an apostle, a direct apostle of the lamb, not, not the initial 12 apostles, he could challenge Apostle Peter. Read their writings. You see them challenging each other. Yeah. Apostle Paul. Those, you could not challenge those 12. They walked and lived with Jesus. Except one untimely boy. He calls himself Apostle Paul. He comes in and says, hey Peter. I rebuke Peter. Before others came in, he was eating with the Gentiles. But when he saw his kind, he then, yeah, he says, you're a hypocrite, Peter. Yeah. Only with a greater grace can you do that. Hmm. There are levels of grace. Okay. Your level can't rebuke a higher level. Right. Hmm. Right. Otherwise you die, you wither and die. Okay. Hmm. Your level must rebuke somebody lower. Okay. Hmm. That's why always correction upwards is rebellion. Oh yes, it's as simple as that. You can't correct upwards, you're rebelling. Mm -hmm. Because you, you're not qualified. You can't see someone who's higher than you in grace and correct them. Don't correct them. I teach our people here, if you see a pastor who doesn't belong to office doing anything and you're not a pastor, don't correct them. Don't correct them. A young crazy man was sending Pastor Mtla, not from our church, messages. I, 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 today I met him by the side. I rebuked him. I just said, rubbish, what you did? He says, I didn't know men of God. I said, don't do that again. Don't do that again. Don't send messages to this man trying to, to encourage him or whatever. I don't know what he was doing. He wasn't encouraging. But whatever message he was sending, I said, don't send those messages to him. <laughs> he would wake up and send teaching messages to him. You are teaching a pastor. You are not a pastor. <laughs> Please, don't teach me. Allow me to teach you. Yes, sir. <laughs> I know a little bit better than you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just said a little bit. Yes, <laughs> By the grace of God. Yes, yes, so, so when you find someone who is higher than you in grace, don't teach them. If someone who's higher than you gives you a lift, don't start teaching them. You know, as it says in John 1.1, 1, 1, as it says in, in, no, ask questions so that grace will flow. Grace never flows upward. It falls from up to down. You understand that? So then teach. Even if you feel like teaching, don't teach that person. Go and find a, your, your small puppy and teach your puppy. Leave that man to teach you. Grace will flow. Yeah. So if you're a member of this church, you meet another pastor, then don't teach the pastor. Ah. Hey, don't teach the pastor, please. Ask questions if you are to talk. Mm. There are two things that you can do. Keep quiet if you're in the car or talk by asking questions. Yeah. You can come John. You can don't talk from here to Guero with a man or a woman who is more full of grace than you, and you dominate the talk. Oh yeah, like I did, and share your experiences that are nonsensical. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep quiet and ask questions. Keep quiet. You will be surprised how you learn by asking questions. Hmm. Even if you feel compelled to say something, don't say it. It won't add value to that person. Okay. Yeah. Just one right question. How do I do this? How do I fast? How do I hear God? How do I hear the voice of God? That conversation will create the presence of God in that car. Mm. I was with a young man. I've told you about a young man who jumped in my car from uh, Lopenguna to here. This guy had verbal diarrhea. He couldn't stop talking. Yep, yep. Yet when he sat in my car, God said, tell this man this word. A prophetic word that will change his life. But the moment he said, when I try to say something, he said, no, 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 let me say it. And, 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 and he talked until I dropped him here. I said, Lord, I tried to give that word. The fool was talking. I called him the fool. The fool was talking. I couldn't even stop the fool. Yeah, the fool went. So I go in and change clothes. I was moving from one conference to another conference. So I change clothes and I share the same testimony. I said, today I had a prophetic word. I wanted to give it to a fool that opened my car. He never asked. He just, just opened it. He said, where are you going? And sat down. He said, let's go together. <laughs> then when I tried to say something, he would be, because I wanted to say, get out of the car. God said, don't give him this word now. 
<laughs> Could I give the word? I couldn't. The man was talking. He's a pharmacist. <laughs> I don't know pharmacists to talk like that or science students to talk like that. Usually it's historians that talk like that. But he, he, <laughs> so he talks, talks, talks. Then I'm sharing in this conference now and said, I was with a certain fool. Little did I know. I narrate the story. The guy is sitting at the bed. Yes, I am the one. I am the one. <laughs> First of all, I couldn't hear. I said, yeah, the person you're talking about, he is at the back there. I, I said, come. And then there was revival in the church from that fool. Yeah. Then I said, whoever came with this man came, the mother came, the brothers came, the girlfriends came, everybody came. And that's how revival hit at the place that I was in. Who was in that service many years ago? Who was here who was in that service? None of you were in that service. And then the whole conference alight. We could not preach in that conference. Yeah. We just, everybody was under the power. Everybody down from a fool who could have kept quiet. Eh, but grace was given to the fool second time around. You may not hear the second time around, Grace. No, sir. So keep quiet and learn. Say amen. amen. How many are learning as I talk to you now? Yeah. Yeah. Manifestation. Manifestation. Manifestation of grace. <laughs> this divine influence, though invisible, I'm glad it's only seven. Wow. I have 30 minutes to kill this thing. And, and this divine influence, though invisible, say invisible. invisible. Say it again with me. Say invisible. Though invisible, manifests in our lives in various ways. Say amen. When grace is at work in our lives. It brings certain blessings and benefits, namely, number one, write them down. Favor, write down that word. Say favor. Say it again, say favor. favor. Number two, number two, acceptability. Can you keep it in acceptability? Fagu number two, acceptability. Number three, gifts. Number four, liberality, to give with freedom. Number five, joy, not joy yet, but joy. Yeah. Joy, say joy. Number six, expansion. Number seven, possession or prosperity. I want to attempt to do three, just three, one, two, and three. I know I've done one favor there. Uh, so when the grace of God is upon your life, People around you are unable to explain your life. Very few people are able. Some think because of the blessings over your life, you're a drug dealer. Mm. Say, so you must be a drug dealer. How can you be blessed like that? Okay, they are not. Grace makes you a wonder to many, like David. Watch the scripture that we read last time around. There's the scripture, Psalm 71, verse 7. Let's read it together. Number one, two, and three. I am as a wonder unto many. <laughs> that people, people can't fathom your life, can't understand you, can't understand how come you're like this. Eh, how come? Because when the grace of God is upon you truly, even though there is largeness around you, you remain simple. You see the, all these false prophets flying up and high and so forth, and people following them. Bim, 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 bim. Uh, that's rubbish. Grace of God makes you sober. Yeah. You are not looking for people. Whatever you're going. Bim, 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 bim. I go alone to the airport and come back alone. Why do you have an entourage to go to the airport? <laughs> Why do I need the 20 cars to go to the airport? Uh, what for? <laughs> Why do I need any to reach people? Because I'm going to preach a plane. I've jumped into many planes and gone to many countries. Can you imagine if I'm going to the airport, everybody has to come to the airport with me, and everybody has come. I rebuked one man, one son of mine. I said, don't do this rubbish of yours. Why should people carry you to the airport and take you to the airport and come? What is this rubbish? Why can't you go alone to the airport and just put a plane and disappear? If you want somebody, get your wife and say goodbye to your wife. <laughs> Why this?
By this commotion, only Africans do crazy things like that. <laughs> You're going to chop it. Everybody must go. Ah, Papa is going. Papa. Oh, Mama is going. Hey, go. <laughs> and come. Okay, yes. <laughs> it's just a plane after all. <laughs> Have you seen a white man? Black people. Have you seen a white man do such a thing? No. Yeah. Up, up, up. Go to London and see whether you can fit in to try to do that. Who, 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 is, who is this crazy idiot? <laughs> it's only in Africa where we do mad things like that. And everybody puts it on a Facebook. And they think, oh, great. I wish as well. I would have many cars coming. Because pastors in Africa, most of them are near psychopaths. I am telling you, there's a deficiency somewhere with, with the African pastors. Yes. Schizophrenics. Very, very near to madness. <laughs> I was sharing this. I don't know where we were sharing. We were sharing this. That we pastors somehow, somewhere, as Kwananga 90%. I am telling you. I will tell you what. I saw on Facebook another pastor driving a motorbike, a big motorbike. He enters the church with a motorbike. Brrr, and he waits until the church is gathered together. And he, it's a big machine. It's a big horse. Boop, 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 boop. And there it is a career there. And the Bibles are there. And then off. And the ushers come in. <laughs> and they lay the Bibles. Can't you see that? This is madness. Yeah. Until someone who's of a sober man and say, anyway, if you do this again, we're going to tie you and take you to Nguchen. You need an injection to make you sober. <laughs> Most pastors are, are just a little bit on the borderline. <laughs> and sheep can't tell that the people that they're pastoring them are mad. <laughs> Look at the pastor next to you and say, Ah, Munuamari, Amen. <laughs> Mess. <laughs> Here I am. I am preaching in one of my churches in another country. Yeah. I find my son who had picked up a wrong culture, one way or the other. He is a table. There is chicken there, there is fruits there. I said, What is this rubbish here? I rebuked him in front of me. I said, We don't do that in this church. Take away this chicken. You want to be chewing chicken? <laughs> Can't you see that pastor's uh, borderline? You're in that conference. Yeah. Hey. I said, get away with this chicken. What is this? <laughs> Why are you feasting when others are worshiping? Are you a psychopath? <laughs> and sheep as well will wish, I wish as a pastor, as well so that there will be a roast chicken there. And so, you are imitating a madman. A person who's supposed to be in Guchen. We should apprehend that person. There's an injection in this picket in Guchen. Just put it in his palms. Shua! And then sober down. And say, man of God, please, be normal. <laughs> be normal. Just be normal. <laughs> be normal. Why is it we in Africa are abnormal like that? <laughs> why? <laughs> Ask them, why are you abnormal like that? Can I therefore say this to you? No matter how much God empowers you, please remain normal. It is then when you are normal, God can elevate you more. Elevate you more. One was sitting on a chair like this, and people were lifting. He says, I'm flying on your behalf. And men were sweating ashes. And he's saying, I'm prophesying, lift me up, let me fly on your behalf. And he's flying on them. Men are sweating. Why not prophesy standing? Where do you need to fly? <laughs> Are you a wizard? Ever change up? Unkulungula sees the chinaba fundis. Songen, including this one. I see no change. The first thing is to have a sober wife who will tell you, "Mgam, can't you enter the bar?" But some of these wives, they want that too. Hey, hey, they want that too. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey,
been normal. Amen. <laughs> I have over 800 churches. I'm normal. You can talk to me after the service. Yeah, you can talk to me. You can sit down with me and I'll talk to you and answer you. you. I won't say, as a man of God, <laughs> I feel, um, I see 27 demons in you. <laughs> no, I'll be normal to you. If, if you have time to invite me to your home, I will come and eat. Whatever is why you have put there, we will eat together. If you want to masungo, I'll come and eat your kwarara. Be normal. Just be normal, man of God. Woman of God, be normal. You are the one that causes the man of God to be abnormal because you are not talking to him. Your wife can talk to you like no other person can. And say, hey, what you did there, who sent you to hell? What are you doing? Be sober. Wives are, wives are a good influence to their, to their, to their men. Okay. Yeah. All these men of God, you see them making noise. If they've got proper wives, they will not do that. Yeah. Not this spooky wife that say, oh, men of God. Hey, hey. No, that's, hey, 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 be so. What are you doing there? Hey, be so. Please. Be normal. <laughs> what are you doing? These are people of God. Be normal. Then you learn to be normal. But if you are married to a, to a crazy wife as well, who is deficient of attention, eh, she wants you to have more attention so that she will get that attention. So you have two schizos in the house. <laughs> ah, yeah. What a mess. Mm. And the sheep, oh, man of God. <laughs> Go deeper, man of God. Touch me where you want to touch me, man of God. If you feel like touching me, touch everywhere. Hey, hey, a man of God to touch you everywhere. Anything you want to touch, touch, man of God. And this is a man of God here. You are telling this man of God, look at how hungry his eyes are. You are telling him to touch where he wants to touch you. He will take you halfway. He won't come home. <laughs> Who do you think a man of God is? A God? That he has no feelings? Man of God, may I sit on your lap? <laughs> hey, man of God, hey, can I, I feel your prophecy is going deeper when I'm sitting on your lap. The man of God will eat you. The man of God will eat you. <laughs> Who do you think a man of God is? A God that he has no feelings. I have feelings. <laughs> I'm highly anointed, but I have feelings. Yeah. I have feelings. <laughs> Every man of God has feelings. That's why the Bible uses the word flee. Flee. <laughs> When you see a lady rolling her eyes there as a man of God and you are together and she rolls and rolls, don't keep on watching those eyes. Before you know it, you are on the floor. Mm. <laughs> Am I teaching something here to somebody? Yeah. I am as a wonder unto many. Tell your neighbor, I'm as a wonder unto men. I prophesy that you'll be a wonder unto men. In the name of Jesus. Say amen. We're still on point one, number one. Look at how time flies here. And, uh, and look at the seven manifestations of grace. Let's grace and favor. One of the things which grace does in your life is that it causes you to enjoy the favor of God. When the grace of God comes upon you, favor locates you. Say amen. Say, favor and grace. Say, my name is favor. Say it again. Say, my name is favor. Tell your neighbor, say, hey, hey, hey. My name is favor. My name is favor. Change that and say, call me favor. Hmm. Some of you don't really understand what favor is. When favor falls on your life, you will be surprised. You will be surprised. Wherever you go, people think you are a sign and a wonder. Don't lose your mind because people think that. Always understand this is the grace of God. 
Remain sober. Keep your feet on the ground. Say amen. amen. Psalm 102 verse 3. When you have no favor, this is what happens. For many, for my days are consumed like smoke. And my bones are burned like a heath. Yeah, you know there is no favor there. May the favor of God be your portion. Favor, as we have said always, in Greek, the word is shannon. Meaning to bend or stoop. We have just said that. In kindness to an inferior. We say to you, favor comes or grace from the superior to the inferior. Never the other way around. Never the other way around. So when God decides to stoop down and lift you up through or by his grace, you know your life will never be the same again. When favor locates you, it simply means God has reached down to you. We gave you effects of favor last time. We said favor causes you to be treated kindly wherever you go. Kindly wherever you go. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And this man, Daniel, enjoyed unprecedented favor. We say B. Favor does not permit emptiness. It loads you with benefits. Say amen. Exodus 3, 21. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be when you go that you shall not go empty-handed. Say amen. So when you enjoy the grace of giving, you find that God is always filling your pockets with money. Say amen. Favor C brings satisfaction. It brings into your path satisfaction. Naphtali enjoyed that. Let's read Deuteronomy 33 verse 23. And of Naphtali, he said, oh, Naphtali, satisfied. Say satisfied. satisfied. What is he satisfied with? Favor. Satisfied with favor. And full of the blessings of the Lord. Possess the west and the south. Say amen. amen. D. Favor enthrones you and puts you into leadership positions. Once favor is upon you, wherever you go, people want you to lead. Can you lead? I know. Can you open in prayer? I know. Can you tell us? Ah, yeah. Can you share? Ah, yeah. Can you tell us? Can you lead us? They are telling you to lead because they are seeing the favor of God over your life. Say amen. amen. Esther 2 verse 17. Favor enthrones you. This young Jewish lady, or Jewess, she was a Jewess, said she found favor with God. Favor with God. An orphan lady. The king loved Esther more. Say more. more. Say it again. Say more. more. More than all other women. And she obtained what? Can you see those two twin words? Grace and favor in his sight. More than all other virgins. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made a queen instead of Ashtai. Say amen. amen. May favor look at you. Say amen. amen. Number two, grace and acceptability. Grace will always make you acceptable. That's why so many of you ladies that are very competitive and full of strife you always wonder why a lady who's less prettier than you, according to the way you look at yourself in the mirror, got married and you are pretty and you are not yet married. She has grace. You don't have grace. Uh -huh. You may be pretty but looking like a witch inside. Uh -huh. Displaying all the characteristics of a witch. Hmm. <laughs> and there comes an ordinary lady, but grace is upon her. And therefore, the beauty of that grace on the inside permeates outside. Yeah, yeah. and everybody says, wow. Do you know what? Pound for pound. Say pound for pound. Oh. Yeah, pound for pound. When I look at these two ladies, this one looks beautiful than this one. But when I look at something, the person I enjoy to be with, it is this one. It is this one. This one is pretty, but they sound in God. But there's peace here. Therefore, I want peace the rest of my life. 
beauty fades. But I say we Did you know that as you grow old, everything goes south? Mm -hmm. The breast down, the chomp is down, the palms down, everything goes down because it's nearer going down to the earth where it came from. Hey, if you see that your face sings when you're getting home, hey, everything, your eyes is saying, I'm coming to where I came from. Mm. Coming, coming, coming. coming. Hey, check your bums, you find them sinking, sinking, sinking. If you don't put a corset, one of these days they'll be here. That's why you want to be a corset. Mm. But why you want to be a corset? Why you want to be a corset? Why you want to be a corset? Why you want Si kasta sa kasta o mama wau tonsi lengani. No pasta pla o tando ya kasta. Ah, because I think as if it's the only concept. The concept ya wam. Mwai bo piga kulu nisam. Ni agosi ya kupi figa, but mwai bo piga kulu. Isa u faint isi concept. But nengi be faint be fagi concept. Now we we Because he calls it nothing moves. It just stop. It's removed. It's like a stone. I will move it, but I will not move it. Nice if I were a cool little pan, so faint. And here, Deuteronomy 33, verse 24. We read that. And of Asha, he said, Asha is most blessed of the sons. Let him be acceptable, favored by his brothers, and let him oh, yeah, 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 yeah. let him dip his foot in oil. <laughs> there is no oil in the natural Israel today. Not as yet. Let me use the word not as yet discovered. No oil. What is he talking about? The anointing. Let Asha be blessed with the anointing. Let us. May you dip both your, not one foot, Amen. your feet in oil. Tocha manya ole zizlim kenke zimele oil. Hey, what a blessing for us. I love that blessing given to. This is Moses now blessing the, chil the, the children of Israel, the tribes of Israel. He talks to us. May your feet or foot be dipped in oil. To be acceptable, therefore, means you cannot be resisted <laughs> or rejected or disappointed. You are accepted wherever you go. That's why I find it very hard for a man who is a Christian, who is looking for a wife to marry, who keeps on saying, I can't find one. Bethany. Just mad. <laughs> in the natural, there are more girls in church than boys. <laughs> in the natural. But you, as a man who loves God, surely. There are many girls here. Look at the, my choir here. Look at the choir. Find one if you are serious. Find one in the choir. Mm. <laughs> there are many girls to marry. And they're all ready to be married. They're waiting for these men that can't approach. Temple, it's high time you find a woman. Don't look far. Look at the choir. Don't call them sisters. Not all of them are sisters there. One of them is your wife. Then. <laughs> yeah. If you're saying sister, sister, no. One of them should be your wife. Then. Find one table and just, hey, you, isolate them table. If you need a booster, I have, I'm the booster. I'll come in and say, hey, have you seen Tsepo? I, I, I can even say your credentials here. Tsepo is doing his PhD. Tsepo yeah. <clears throat> plays the lead. You are trying to say the same way in Go on and you get the same way in both ways. And the other way. But this way, you are. I would try to get him in. 
animal. In both ways. <laughs> did you sing for, uh, for her at the animal? No, you did Because you are not a singer. Did you play for her? You know, you play. But Tepo will play. Tepo can play. Tepo will take his, Tepo has two guitars. He will take his guitars to the animal. And say, lady, we are now done. The crowds have gone, lady. <laughs> this is Tepo now. <laughs> <laughs> Sepo will be wearing his tight bilanches uh, with his guitar. Yeah, the crowds have gone. I am Sepo. <laughs> I'm about to play for you. And then Sepo goes, ah, oh God, da, da. <laughs> And the lady gets into the spirit. So those that are shut for others, they're open to you because of the grace of acceptability. Say amen. amen. Lift up your hands and say, I'm highly acceptable. I'm highly acceptable. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's the grace. Acceptability in the name of Jesus. Psalm 19 verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be what? Be what? Be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Luke 21, verse 15. For I will give you a mouth <laughs> and wisdom, which all your adversaries will not be able to gainsay. Some versions say gainsay or contradict or resist. Mm. Yeah. You don't know that church, churches have gangsters? Mm. Yeah, if you're a weak leader, churches have gangsters. Yes. They gang against you without you knowing. We are talking nonsense. So if you're a weak leader, then you're gone. So when I don't feel good, I'm not trying to. I'm street in the bottom of the city church. I'm not going to be a land. I'm not going to be a land. Is that not so? That's why you should chase people now and again. Nobody is why church. Just chase them. It's wrong not to chase a pastor, not to chase one person. If for you, cause your one, just one. Now we do. So what do you mean No, I mean I have done that every year. Just one or two. Just, just one. Only is why you want to go why are you troubled as a pastor when they look at the Shugu Nusa? The Shugu Nusa. The union is the church. We have some church union is the church. I told you once. I had three fat ladies who were union is the church. I chased all of them. I said, go. I went to another pastor and said, pastor, I'm about to bring you three unions in your church. I'll write letters to you. I said, why are you saying them? I said, maybe you can handle them. Maybe I failed to handle them. But they want a place to land it. So I wrote letters and they called them. Three of you, you are going. They cried. I've never had problems from those ladies again. Hmm. Yes. They were a problem. They were dividing my church. <laughs> Me, I'm evangelizing. They are, this one is mine, that one is mine. They were putting them in their groups. So I said, hey, Abba, Mama, Abba, Kulile, love. Come to my intercessors. We will not groom my intercessors. They will not deny my intercessors. Who won't A deep, deep. I don't know what they were deep in, but very deep. <laughs> mm. It church, people come out of their volition, isn't it? Out of their will. Mm. So no one puts a gun and says, hey, you shall belong to this church. No. How so good to lay? Got to plan So this type of anointing causes you to deal with situations. A leader in church must never be a weak leader. That's why you must change your oil. Yeah, a leader must be strong in church. If you have to lead people, people want strength, tempered with grace. Not extreme strength, tempered with grace. Be kind, but be fair. 
Because leadership is not easy. I have met many crazy people. I can tell you my life here. Many mad people. Mad, mad people. If I sit down and give you five mad people that I've met in church, you feel pity for me. You will come and give me money afterwards. Many, many mad people. That we're mad. You think, why do you come to church when you, when you have this mind? Eh? When you have this mind. Some people come in, I'm mad, I'm mad. I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them who I am. When white men came in and said, stop, stop the Holy Spirit in your church. Eh, stop. I'll give you all the money that you need. And he said to me, I like you. Very few men say, I like you to me. Eh, but this man said, I like you. He had a beard. He said, I like you. I said, whoa, whoa. you really like me? <laughs> what do you want to do with me? He says, I like you. I have money. And he had money. He says, I'm, I'm blessed. He says, he was blessed by God. He says, I'm blessed by God. I'm blessed to have so much money. Yeah. This is what I can do for you. I want to buy you pieces of land. I want to buy you this and that and that. I want to pay all your stuff. That's what he promised. You can even hire more stuff. I will look after everybody. I said, there is a catch here. Yes. Then he said, Stop the Holy Spirit in your church. I enjoy, he says to me, I enjoy your teaching. Your teaching is wonderful. But I want you to stop talking, speaking about the Holy Spirit. I, the moment he said that anger rose in me, I said, I have no time for you. Leave my office now. You rich man, can you perish with your money? Leave now. I've never seen the man. I'm sure where he is, he has no money now. I guessed him. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see how many people are? Uh, a modern pastor will compromise there. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, yeah. so, so what do you suggest? So, so you suggest that, uh, yeah, we, we talk less uh, about that, yeah. All right, yeah. So, so, so I should change myself. All right, before I preach, I will send you my sermons. Yes. You vet them yourself. If you love money like that as a preacher, you'll be a prostitute. Mm. It is God that gives you money, not people. Not people that you pastor. Amen. Yeah. If you compromise to the people you pastor, guess what? God will not cause them to release the funds. Mm. If you are tough and give them what God says to give them, God will talk to them. Wow. Yeah. Don't preach for money. Don't preach to entertain people. I'm not an entertainer here. I'm not a clown. <laughs> yeah. So you see, but my up. So humble. Who humble with him? Please go. He's the giver of grace. Please go. That's been my motto over years. Yeah, my motto over years. I am so glad that when I stand up here, I forget who's given me money. I say that, but Lord, I'm going to give you money, but I'm gone. Mm. May God blind my ears to people that have done things for me. Yeah. And just had a hit hard on them. Keep them at the my God. Say amen. amen. Ephesians 1, 4 to 6. It reads, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Verse 5, verse 5, verse 5. Heaven predestined us to adoption as sons. That's grace. It means before you knew it, God had settled your issue and therefore chosen you. And therefore uses the word election. Yeah. Not election that we've just passed by. No, election. God chose you. Before the foundation of the world. He said, I know. 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 I According to the good pleasure of his will, verse 6. In the pray to the praise of the glory of his grace. Ah. By which he has made us what? Ah, there is that word there. Say I'm highly acceptable. Say it again. Say I'm highly acceptable. We want to end with grace and gift stand. Grace and gifts. Hey, these prayer items, we were supposed to deal with them. Last week, now. Grace and gifts. Grace is always linked to gifts. All gifts that you get are 
in linked to, to grace. John 1 verse 14. And the word, let's read it. Then the, and the, and, and the glory is full of and truth, full of grace and truth. Ephesians 4, 7 and 8, let's read. For to each, let's read. For, uh, Ephesians 4, 7 and 8, please. Four. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gifts. Can you see the linkage there? Yes. All right. Let's go to verse 8. Therefore, he says, you must always read these verses one after the other because you get the meaning of it. Therefore, he says, when he did what? When Christ ascended on earth, he led captivity captive, and he did what? Gave gifts, gifts to men. To Linked to that grace that you saw there. Okay, can you see that? So there are many gifts that Christ gave when he ascended. There are many. There are not only the nine gifts, but there are many. Proverbs 18, verse 16. I want you to understand this before we tie it up together. A man's what? Makes what? Room for him. And brings him before great men. When Christ gives you gifts, gifts open doors for you. Amen. Gifts are amazing. Amen. Your calling, your gift is amazing. It will open doors for you before great people. Great people, just cultivate that gift. What is a gift? Right, gift is derived from the Greek word dama. Say dama with me. Which means the following, a present. <laughs> God gives you a present. Women love presents. Oh, you give me a present. Is it mine, really? Uh, God gives you a gift. Mm. A bestowment bestows on you. Something given to someone for their advantage. Say amen. Oh, D, watch D now. Furnishing with necessary things. Say things. Mm. All of us need things, but necessary things. Uh -huh. E, an appointment to an office. That's a gift. An appointment to what? To an office. Benefits of the gifts. Let's read that scripture. Those are the benefits. Let's read it. One, two, and three. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great man. Great man. Great man. I was in a certain country that is a kingdom in, a, in, in, our, in our region here. The man I was preaching for is connected. He said, I want you to meet the king. I want you to go and, and, and minister to the king, to the king of the land. But the king gives you 10 minutes. I said, what? He gives me 10 minutes. I said, ah, no. I wanted more than 10 minutes to, to the king. The king has demons, so I needed more time. <laughs> <laughs> with the king. I said, call me at a later time when the king has time to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then in our nation here, a man said, go and meet the king, the king of our land. So I went to meet the king. The king of our land gave me more than 45 minutes. It is me who said to the king of our land, please say, release me. Uh, I want to go. I'm catching a plane. I want to leave, please say. The moment I said, the man wanted me to sit, I wanted to sit there. The man said, no, come and sit next to me. Mm. So he said, yeah. we talked like we knew each other for years. Tango sasa. Say sasa. Talking. Hey, two of us. Everybody left the room. Two of us. We talked, talked. I must confess that I was nervous when I went in there. Mm. Like every other normal man of God who gets the strength when the anointing falls. Very never. I didn't know what he, because I had a way to give him. Mm. Don't ask me whether I gave it that way or not. It's another story for another day. Mm. Anyway. So it makes, I'm trying to qualify that point. It brings him before great men. Yeah. Mm. May you stand before great women and men in the name of Jesus. 
Eha, may they desire to hear you and hear what you are saying in Jesus' mighty name. I told you of a story here, I ate in a billionaire's home. Mm, my wife and I. It is the billionaire that was managing the cooking for me and my wife. We said to my wife, 30 minutes, said no, no. Max 40, we want to leave. As we must have a penalty near, but there not delay. 40 minutes. Oh no. We ended up staying more than two hours. Even when we left, we said, no, don't go, don't go. Say, we're going now. Leave it when it's sweet. Oh, if we didn't tell you, we'll have to say, let's go up. We left it like that. Who moved very low? We are shallow. We are shallow. Joe Mamuchi, and when I fell asleep, we were raising Gagilab, Lama Petrum, Sitale, leave that place. If someone invites you to their home, quickly eat what you are eating and leave before you lie to them. Yeah. Because you are at your weakness when somebody has cooked you a meal, especially lamb. <laughs> a lamb. So your gift announces you to the world. Hey. Your gift opens great doors for you. Your gift makes you a real success. Your gift brings you joy and satisfaction. Hey, say amen. Hmm. Locate your gift at the throne of grace and everyone has one there. James 1 verse 7. I won't finish this on, the ground, on gifts. We're going to touch it on Sunday. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights and with whom there is no or shadow of turning. Mm. Uh, let's leave it for Sunday. Therefore, I'll give you point four, five, six, and seven on Sunday plus this point three, which is incomplete. Let's leave it there. Say amen. amen. Least you all run away. I remain alone preaching. You're looking for Lisa. I think there's only one person. All right. I want us to pick uh, one item here because all of them are very important here. I want you to pray with me for this grace called the shame removing grace. Shame removing grace. I don't know what your past is like. I don't know who's walked into your past and harmed you, molested you, abused you emotionally and the physical. I don't know what scars you may be carrying. I don't know what shame you may be carrying. Shame of rejection. Shame of... Uh, of, of, of failure or caused by failure. Shame because things fell apart in your life. Shame because you failed grade seven like me. I failed grade seven. I had to repeat. Mm, carry that shame. Shame of poverty in your bloodline. Shame of witchcraft in your bloodline. Maybe your grandmother was a witch flying. Mm, she flew all over. She flew past Machovan and flew past town here and everywhere else. May we ask that that shame be taken away from you. Say amen. Shame of poverty. There are many people that wish they were born in different families. You look at other families, you wish I was born in that family. But you can change that within your family. The grace can look at you in that family. Say amen. Mm. Some wish, I wish I wasn't married to that person. Yeah. I wish they could die so that I have another chance to marry again. But hey, that person won't die. They will outlive you. If you wish someone dead, they will outlive you. A certain white woman came to me and said, Bishop, I know by the spirit my husband is going to die. So, so pray for me that I'll be ready as he dies. I said, Mom, I'm not praying that prayer with you. I'm not praying. It's a witchcraft prayer. She says, why? I said, you're wishing your husband to die. Up to the day the husband is alive. Yeah. Husband refused to die. May that man that you have live forever. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. May he live forever. Because there will be no better man that can handle you than this man. Yeah. He 
is wired to hang on. Others have no patience. He's a saint, this person. <laughs> saint M. Love. <laughs> Amen. There is no man. Whatever God gave you, he gave you. Uh, there is no man better than that man that I know there called Mr. Chiramakuma. Yeah. Yeah. Makonda na Makonda. Yeah. So, we bless God. May he live forever. Amen. There is no man better than the brigadier. Mm. Yeah. He is right for you. There is no woman better than your woman there that you are married. All others are fake in your life. That woman is the right woman. They may appear like they are Votoboto Sarimi, but that woman is the right one. She's called Makumalo. Mm -hmm. She knows where to press. She knows where to touch. <laughs> she knows. She has all the keys to the buttons that are necessary for the accordion to play. Otherwise, the accordion will refuse to play. I went out of the middle of the So, Chi Chi is the right woman for you. That's why she's called Chi Chi. Chi Sa. Chi Sa Nyama. <laughs> when I says when it is photos as a colour, but it's a it's a full gospel. Hey, can you offer me some of your words of tatin? Oh, <laughs> shame removing grace. We are praying only for one item as we go. First Samuel twenty twenty five and twenty six. So the men of Israel said. Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. Forty years, this man brought shame to Israel. It needed a grace that is shame removing. Ah, it appeared one day upon a young man called David, battle front, and the language changed. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? From that day on, shame was removed. You pray for yourself that shame whatever shame is in your bloodline, in your family, be removed. Lift up your hands as we pray. Father, we are praying that shame will be removed in our lives, in the name of Jesus. That indeed grace will fall upon us. Abundant grace. Mighty grace. Strong grace. Unbelievable grace. That removes shame from our youths. Shame of, from our families. Shame from our relatives. Shame everywhere. Shame from failure. Shame from the mistakes that we made. Many, many mistakes that we made. May you remove shame. May your grace come and remove that shame. Take away shame in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Remove it, Lord, in our lives today. Wash us and cleanse us from every bit of shame. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, dear God. Take away the sting of shame. Take away the source of shame. In the name of Jesus. The shame removing grace, Lord. Be our portion today. In the name of Jesus. We bless you as we honor you and magnify your name. In the name that is above every name. The name of Jesus. Lift up your hands together with me and say, Lord Jesus. All shame is removed. Shame in my bloodline. Shame because of my past. Shame because of abuse. Emotional abuse. Any other abuse. Shame because of poverty in my life. Shame because of failure in my life. Shame because of the way I think I look shame because of what people say and what others have said about me in the past. Shame because of my failures in the past. May your grace remove all sources of shame in my life in the name of Jesus. I thank you that I can stand like young David and say you shame uncircumcised live my life now in the name of Jesus I declare that my mind my emotions my spirit man 
is free from this shame in Jesus name put your hands together like shame removing moment. ladies and gentlemen we are about to go home we have envelopes here and our ushers have we are giving towards the building towards tithes and offerings if you want an envelope lift up your hand I'll give you one or the ushers will give you one too okay we are giving of our tithes we are building remember we are moving, moving, moving. We need all the finances. Uh, Bishop Nyala, you are at sight here. How did you feel? Maybe you come and tell these people of ours. Yeah. How, are we progressing? Very well. What, what is very well? There's so much progress at sight. There's so much progress at sight. Yeah. Do you think these people should give towards the building? We should, we should give towards the building. Give. Yeah. Yeah, please. Encourage them now. Okay. In two minutes. Yeah, maybe you can. Mm. Uh, this, the work that is at site is outstanding and uh, it's amazing. Uh, I've just covenanted with God that every time I should pass, every day I should actually pass there before I go anywhere else because uh, God is doing amazing things at site. If you feel there, you, even if you get there, you're bed and you just feel relieved. You just, the atmosphere is, it's like there's someone preaching already inside. And I don't know why you're not getting there, but the, the building is ministering. Mm. And um, as a church, we're also bringing our place, Bishop. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Mm. Please, let's give to us the building. We are pushing up to December here. Let's push. May God bless you. As you write, do you have a pen? Somebody with an extra pen? Thank you, Brother Shep. May the lady visit us again, Brother Shep. Mm. Uh. Shep, tell us about evangelism while we are. The pen is yours. Cutting search. So um, we have evangelism on Saturday, so we're meeting here at 9.30 in the morning, so I want to invite all of you guys to, to come and join us as we're going to do our follow-ups. This coming weekend, we're going to Enjure. So last Saturday, we went to Ilo Pemola, and we had some that came, so we invite all of you guys to come to Njure as we do our follow-ups. Thank you. All right, we're giving time before we leave we can come right here and give. Thank you so much. Thank you for your patience. I know it's late. May God bless you.